Deep in the shadowy corners of the microbial world, there exists a strange and largely invisible army, not soldiers of flesh and blood, but microscopic organisms with powers that seem almost alchemical. They thrive in places humans would consider inhospitable. Abandoned mines, toxic wastewater, or even within the crusted layers of automotive junkyards. These are bacteria with a rare talent. They can take dissolved invisible traces of precious metals like platinum and palladium and turn them into solid, usable nuggets to understand how we got here. How microbes might one day become our allies in salvaging the most sought after elements of the 21st century. We must first understand the problem we face. Platinum group elements, or PGEs, include six metals. Platinum, palladium, rhodium, ruthenium, iridium, and osmium. These metals are incredibly rare, chemically unique, and enormously valuable. They're essential in modern electronics, medical instruments, hydrogen fuel cells, and perhaps most notably, catalytic converters. These devices, tucked away in the underbellies of nearly every car with a combustion engine, use platinum and palladium to neutralize toxic exhaust gases. Without them, modern urban air would be virtually unbreathable. But these metals come at a cost. They are mined from just a handful of places on Earth. Russia, South Africa and Canada dominate the global supply. The mining process is brutal. It consumes vast amounts of energy, releases significant carbon emissions, and generates toxic tailings. Waste rock that still contains traces of valuable metals, but which is typically dumped and forgotten, and catalytic converters, as cars are retired and scrapped. Their converters often become victims of theft or decay. Every year, an estimated hundreds of tons of platinum and palladium are lost in the global waste stream. Recovering these lost metals has become an economic and environmental imperative. Enter the microbes. Scientists began noticing unusual behavior in bacteria, isolated from mine drainage systems, places rich in metal ions, but poor in life. Some of these microorganisms, including Desulfovibrio desulforicans, and certain Shawanella species were found to precipitate metals out of solution. In simple terms, they could take dissolved ionized platinum and palladium from water and convert them into solid metallic nanoparticles. The discovery was startling. How were these microbes accomplishing what seemed to be a form of microbial metallurgy? The answer lies in their metabolism. Many of these bacteria are anaerobic, meaning they thrive in environments without oxygen. Instead of oxygen, they use metals as final electron acceptors in their metabolic process. When they encounter dissolved platinum or palladium ions, often toxic to most life forms, they reduce them using electrons from their metabolic pathways, transforming them into inert, solid forms. These tiny metal particles precipitate either outside the cell wall or within the periplasmic space between cell membranes. This isn't just a chemical curiosity, it's a potentially revolutionary technique. It means that bacteria could be harnessed to scavenge precious metals from low concentration sources. Sources that are economically unfeasible to mine using conventional methods. Take catalytic converters. They contain just a few grams of platinum or palladium each. But with millions scrapped annually, the potential recovery is enormous. Traditional recycling methods involve smelting and leaching, high temperature, acid intensive processes that are expensive and polluting. But with the right microbial cultures, we could simply dissolve the metal containing material, feed it to a bacterial bioreactor and allow the microbes to do the hard work. And it's not just theory. Pilot studies have demonstrated this concept in action. 
At the University of Birmingham, researchers have used disulfovibrio strains to recover palladium from spent catalysts, achieving over 90% recovery rates. They showed that the bacteria not only recover the metal, but form nanoparticles that can be reused directly in industrial catalytic processes. These so-called biogenic nanoparticles may even be superior in some cases due to their unique surface properties and lower tendency to aggregate. Meanwhile, researchers at the University of Tokyo have explored genetically engineering bacteria to enhance their metal reducing capabilities. By tweaking certain genes, they've created strains that are more efficient, more selective, and more resilient in the harsh chemical environments, typically found in mine waste or e-waste recycling streams. But perhaps the most ambitious vision is bioremediation of mine tailings. Across the world, enormous piles of waste rock lie abandoned after mining operations have ceased. These tailings often contain trace amounts of valuable metals, too little to justify traditional recovery, but not too little for bacteria. In South Africa, where platinum mines dominate the landscape, there is growing interest in deploying microbial consortia to passively leach and concentrate platinum group metals from these tailings over time. Think of it, giant fields seeded not with crops, but with microscopic workers quietly chipping away at waste rock, concentrating rare metals for later harvesting, all while detoxifying the landscape. Of course, there are challenges. These systems must be carefully controlled. Temperature, pH, and nutrient supply all affect microbial performance. The presence of other toxic metals, such as arsenic or mercury, can inhibit bacterial activity, and scaling up from the lab to industrial volumes remains a major hurdle, yet the promise is too great to ignore. Imagine a closed loop system. Cars are dismantled, their converters fed into a gentle, aqueous solution, bacteria are added, and over several days or weeks, they convert dissolved palladium and platinum into solid nanoparticles. The metal is filtered out, the bacteria are recycled, and the precious elements are returned to industry. No smoke, no fire, no acid. The economic implications are huge, with the price of palladium sometimes exceeding that of gold. Even small recovery percentages yield significant profits, and the environmental benefits Reduced mining, less toxic waste, cleaner air, are incalculable. But perhaps the most profound implication is philosophical. For centuries, humans have dreamed of alchemy, of turning base matter into something precious. And now, through the power of evolution and microbial metabolism, nature has handed us a solution. Not gold from lead, but platinum from poison, palladium from waste an ancient dream, reborn not in the furnace, but in the petri dish. The future of metal recovery may lie not in deeper mines or harsher chemicals, but in harnessing the quiet, invisible genius of life itself. And in the end, the greatest treasures may not be buried in the earth, but cultivated in the lab, grown like crops, and whispered into being by the tiniest of organisms, working in the dark, one ion at a time.